the hassle in Kabinda to get out into mainland Angola is still on. I believe I'm going to be loaded onto the onto the ship or ferry. I don't know about this. Hello from Kabinda, the Republic of Angola. It is 45 minutes past 8 a.m. local time. And so good morning if you are in my time zone. Good afternoon and good evening to you if you are outside my time zone and depending on what time you are seeing this video. The target is to hit mainland Angola. As it stands now, it's going to be a struggle. And my visa is 10 days very very limited and for me that is the main worry if i can get to uh, luanda quite early that will be fine I'm currently here at the cabinda port and i suspect it's going to be very difficult to get a ferry to mainland angola my friend cedric in brazzaville put me put me in touch with this sister and uh, Kamel, she's, she's very, very helpful. Uh, she's the one helping me here to see if I can secure a ferry. According to her, the waves are kind of high. It is windy and stormy on the Atlantic Ocean right now. The passenger ferries are not really moving as a result of that. All right. Uh, so, the hassle in Kabinda to get out into mainland Angola is still on. So what's happening is it was impossible for me to catch a, a ferry anytime today, nor tomorrow or even Friday. Ferry operators are trying to monitor the weather condition on the Atlantic Ocean so they are not leaning towards many travels this week. And so I was like, okay, let me see if I can explore the land option. I can still go through DRC but I need to get the consulate of DRC here if they can get me a transit visa. But apparently the consulate here does not deal with foreigners. It deals with Congolese residing in Kabinda here in Angola. But then uh, Kamel, my friend, on the bike ahead, spoke with those in charge at the DRC embassy about my situation. And apparently, I can go to the border and see if I can get any travel document issued to me at the border. Not very far. So, uh, Kamel is taking me there. I told her, well, I can go from here. But she said, no, I want to take you to the border and make sure you are safe to go and then I can say goodbye. She's so kind. Very lovely lady. 
Yeah, so yesterday the two of them the, on, the, on the bike in front of me came to pick me to where I lodged. I slept in the hotel uh, and I paid 12,000 Kwanzaa. I needed that place to rest and also have my devices charged, which was good. If I get to the Congolese side and then they are able to issue me a transit visa, that would be absolutely lovely. So let's get to the border and see what we have there. And I will take it from there. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah, so it's not possible to go get a transit visa at the border. They said it would have been nice if I had it in Brazzaville. But here at the border, the Angola officers asked me to wait. So they went and had a chat with the Congolese side. That was so kind of the officers chief of immigration on the DRC side. He said they don't issue transit visa to foreigners at the border here. Since the officers agreed that it's not possible for me to transit through the DRC by road, they advise that I go back and if it delays that I get on a ferry, I can still go to the Angola Immigration Department here in Cabinda regarding my visa and they might want to extend it for me. It looks like I have to accept the defeat of going through the DRC by road and rather be patient to work out a ferry for mainland Angola from Cabinda. So let me just get back to town and properly plan and decide how that is going to play out. I hope you are doing very well. I am also doing very well by God's grace. It has been such a dramatic time here for me in Cabinda. I arrived on Tuesday. Wednesday, I thought I could catch a ferry. It didn't happen, as I already told you. I tried to explore the land border. It didn't work. Thankfully, my friend here. Good morning. Yes. When I could not travel on Wednesday, she took me to her parents' home. She doesn't speak English. I also don't speak Portuguese. <laughs> so we use the forms to translate. So she took me to her parents' home and then their family hosted me there from uh, Wednesday all the way to today Saturday morning when I'm ready to leave. So she has a friend who works here at the uh, terminal. She, she's been talking to her and then they were able to arrange for a ferry for me today, Saturday, to travel. So yesterday I came here with her to do all the paperwork. My goodness, it's a lot of stress, it's a lot of money. The charges and everything involved, if you look at it critically, it's just exactly like you're traveling from one country to another. So outrageous. The bike has been transported as a freight. So you pay all the duties involved, all the monies involved when you are shipping an item. That's basically what's happening. It's like shipping the bike, from one country to another. Meanwhile, it's still Angola. And for me, that is kind of surprising. Unlike other places where you cross from one end of the country to the other on a ferry, where you pay just the normal fare, you know, for transport. Here, it's a whole freight and you pay for it. I am hitting 170 US dollars traveling just from Cabinda to mainland Angola, basically. But thank God, 
everything is set and I'm here at the terminal waiting for the paperwork to be completed and then me and the bike loaded onto the ferry to travel. I believe I'm going to be loaded onto the onto the ship or ferry. I don't know, but this van in front of me, they asked me to come with him. So I have no idea where we are going to. Let's see. We are getting there, mainland Angola. Bike inspection, a whole lot of legalities are involved to get your bike on a ferry. Major. Let's start, let's start. Is it a number? number. Uh, behind. Daite. Daite. Oui, yes, Daite. You pronounce it very well, Daite. Yes. <laughs> Hmm. It's not easy, but yeah, anyways, okay, for the safety of you and your vehicle, it is good for all these checks to be done. One security check to the other. Bon dia. Good knocks. You were in the comments laughing at me that even your primary school French was better than mine. My brother, I tell you, your French could be better than mine. <laughs> Now we are in a, we, we've come into a Portuguese land and it is even worse. I don't know whether your Portuguese is also better than mine or not. <laughs> it is well. In the shipyard now. Going to the ferry. Okay, we are back to the terminal. We just went through the yard to do the security check and verification. So, 
I'm asked to wait here. I think Angola has really, really done well with their Cabinda port. It's very, very decent and very standard. Bon dia. Sorry? Nice. Where are you from? I'm from Ghana. Ghana? Yes. And where are you going? I am heading to Soyo, Luanda, Lubango. Ah. Yes. Back for uh, the passport? Yeah, it's in the office. Up there. Okay. Let's continue. I think it is that one there. Okay, so we park here? Okay. So I have boarded and I'm the first. I got some VIP treatment from uh, the terminal onto the ferry. Well, I'm the only person traveling with a vehicle. They took care of me quite early. I had an option to be downstairs, but I said no. Um, I would rather be upstairs so that I can catch a good view of the ride. I hope it's a great ride. Let's see how it goes. I'm glad that finally I could hop on, on the ferry. I'll see you on mainland Angola.
Okay. Welcome to mainland Angola. Where is the way out? We have been cleared from the port now, so we are going. Thank you. Okay, welcome to Soyo, our first city in mainland Angola. Luanda is 415 kilometers away. And uh, I need to make a short stop, then we can go. Soyo looks like a, a municipal city. It's going to be a long coaster ride. It's a great, it, it's a beautiful city. Father, I give you praise and I thank you for the gift of life and for the opportunity to be here in Soyo, mainland Angola. Thank you for safe travels from Kabinda all the way to this point. Safe travels on the Atlantic Ocean. Thank you for Angola, the people of Angola. It's my pleasure to be here. Lord, I thank you for my brothers and sisters who are watching from different parts of the world, I give you praise for their lives and for the support that they have been to me on this journey and the support they are to their families and friends also. Lord, I thank you that your grace will be enough for all of us. On the road today, may we be thoughtful of one another and do nothing unwise to hurt each other. We will be there for one another for the glory and honor of your holy name. I praise you and thank you in the name of Christ Jesus. Have I prayed and believed with thanksgiving? Amen. Quarter past 2 p.m. local time here in Soyo. We are 412 kilometers away from Rwanda. This is Soyo, this is Angola, this is Africa. Welcome to Flying Flags. What a pleasure to ride all the way from Ghana in the west coast of Africa to Angola, the southern coast of Africa. Angola. I ended up spending much of the time here trying to get fuel. As compared to the, the countries behind Angola, fuel is way cheaper, but it is also not readily available. 
all the way from Kabinda, I could see people queuing for fuel. When I got to Soyo, I thought I could get fuel there. Apparently, Soyo, they sell fuel to the Congolese. So the black market is kind of very, very ripe in Soyo. Diesel is very, very available, but petrol is not. But thankfully, I had some to get to this town here, at least 140 kilometers from Soyo. I've been able to buy the black market. At the fourth station, it is 300 Kwanzaa for one liter which means you pay 1800 for five liters i paid 1900 for five liters at the black market i haven't done much delayed a bit on the road and i am not sure i'll make it to luanda tonight because it's already past 5 p.m and Luanda is 246 kilometers away. Let's keep going wherever the sun sets. I'll take a break there. Maybe in the next hour or so, I'll make a stop. So let's keep riding. I got a place to spend the night. Just right here. Okay. Esse é o país que me indicaram para estar aqui em Angola, que ele vai girar para aqui. A wonderful time of travel and I am here in this village as you can see bike here Get here. The villagers have been very, very helpful, and so I'm going to be camping here. The hunt for fuel actually delayed me, and so I just could not really do much as I expected. I wanted to be in Luanda before sunset, but in the meantime, I'm just going to end this particular video here. I'm a bit exhausted, and so I hope you like this video. If you did, please hit the like button and smash the subscribe button if you have not subscribed yet i'll see you in the next episode as we head and continue to luanda tomorrow as usual god's grace and peace and bye for now